Song of the Lark is one of the most enigmatic pieces within the children's album. Its place in the cycle is unclear. If you think about the cycle of the 24 pieces as a picture of a child's busy day, by this point the day is over and night has fallen. So it is probably more useful to think about the meaning of this cycle as representing a person's life and that way we can look at the piece more symbolically or even allegorically perhaps. The symbolism of the lark in Russian literature and music is clear. It represents the soaring of the human soul, its ability to fly free like a bird above the trees. So our job in this piece is to represent this freedom of the soul, this flight. The piece should sound almost entirely improvised. As in most cases, the pieces that need to sound improvised require quite a bit of advanced planning. So let's start. The first thing we must work on is the feeling of absolute freedom, relaxation, and a boneless feeling of the right hand. Because without that, our bird will sound, you know, stuffed. That is not particularly attractive, is it? What we need is to pay extreme attention to the composer's markings, particularly the slurs. If you look at the right hand, you will see that the melody is divided into small units each time with a slur that ends with a staccato marking at the end of the slur. Please be careful, this is not the sort of staccato that um, we work on in other pieces, including in um, the children's album. So, under no circumstances should you do the following. Again, that does not sound like a bird flying free. A staccato under a slur is a very interesting uh, articulation. It's neither staccato nor legato, but in fact, what we need to do is to lift with the wrist rather than the fingertip. If you imagine that your hand has no bones whatsoever, if some power lifts your wrist, then the very last part of your hand that leaves the key is the fingertip, something like this. This way, the pickup itself is very slow and there is no definite end to it. So it's quite a magical articulation, but it is very difficult to do here because it happens every, what, four notes? Did you notice? My wrist was almost constantly in motion. I think the wrist is the bird, so let it fly. However, don't let it fly high because things that go up on the piano have a tendency to splat on their way down, don't they? So let's only lift enough to clear the fingertip from the key and no more. The more traditional kind of a staccato, which is short and sharp, does appear in the middle section of the piece. Did you notice? The left hand does not have a staccato, so it creates a very interesting contrast between the longer held note in the left hand, which feels, if not heavy, then at least tenuto in one sense or another, and the right hand, which just chirps its way up. Did you also notice that I pedaled on each quarter note, to my ear at least, the pedal does not interfere at all with the staccato. In fact, it adds a lot of reverberation and so sort of a sparkling feeling on the sound, which makes it even more beautiful. One of the most fascinating features of the Song of the Lark is that, at least in the A section, in the beginning, the right hand and the left hand appear to be in completely different meters. So um, our meter is 3-4, four, 
and the left hand does appear to be in three four, but the right hand seems to be divided quite clearly into two bead increments. In other words, is in two four. So something like this. Right? Two bead increments. And even here, there are four of these things total. So once again, it sounds like we're in two four. And it's only in the middle section that both hands find their way to being in 3-4 again. This is an absolutely fascinating device that Tchaikovsky uses here. It is called a hemiola, although this is not a traditional kind. The term hemiola refers to uh, the possibility of dividing anything that has six beats or six units in it into either two groups of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or into three groups of two. One, two, one, two, one, two. And a hemiola juxtaposes the two in one way or another. In this particular case, the juxtaposition happens between the two hands. What you choose to do about it, how much of it you choose to hear, I think is up to each individual performer. To my ear at least, Hearing the two-bit units in the right hand is far more important than hearing the overall 3-4 meter because I'm afraid you'll get something like this. Well, that didn't make any sense, did it? So let's go back to hearing the right hand in 2-4. that sounds far more natural and far more beautiful. Another fascinating or really hilarious feature in this song is the ending. So whatever allegory of the soul we were thinking about during the whole piece, by the end I think this is all actual bird. can only imagine what happened to the bird. 